Let's get tricky. Yeah. Woo! Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Seb here. I haven't seen you for ages. I've been gone for the last few months, but I figured now I'm back in Monaco for a few months, I would do a new video. So why not do a video on a new little toy that I got recently, um, a Renault Twizy. You've probably all heard of it, electric little car. It's quite cool. Uh, it has enough charge to get you at least halfway where you're going. Um, quite a good car. I actually really like it. So I'm going to run you through the car, sort of tell you about all the little details, sort of do a review kind of video. So let's start right now. I'm going to show you around the outside. Here at the front, you have your charging plug. Um, it takes about three hours to charge the whole thing, and then you have, they say, 80 kilometer range, but if you drive it with any form of uh, fun, it's more like 40, 50k range. Um, my favorite thing about the outside of this car are these scissor doors. How cool is this? Um, round back, it's just pretty simple. It's just your standard sort of twizzy. I'm sure you've seen this. I put a douchebag sticker on there because I thought it looked cool. Um, and yeah, but you know, now that I've got my driving license and everything, I thought why not sort of drive you around the car rather than just tell you about it. So why don't we hop on inside and get that started. <clears throat> so to start the twizzy, you put your foot on the brake, key in the slot if I can find it, turn for a while until you get a little go sign. And yeah, let's get going. You ready, Ben? Let's go. Let's do this. Okay, that's pretty much it. I think I bruised the rib. Ow. conditioning, heating, nothing like that. Um, on this one you actually do have the option of having Bluetooth audio, uh, which is quite useful and you know hands-free phone and all of that stuff, which actually comes in quite handy. And while we're talking about options, um, the options are fairly ridiculous on this car. So if you get one sort of bog standard, it's really cheap, but you don't get anything. So on this one we got quite a few things. So you got the sunroof, uh, which is a really nice one to have. Uh, we also got doors, which believe it or not are an option. Uh, windows, these plastic windows, which are pretty crap to be honest, uh, which you zip up to sort of uh, you know, close them or you can roll them down and stuff. They're, a, uh, they're an option as well. Uh, what else? Ow. Um, blah, blah, blah. What else is an option? I think that's it. Oh, well, having the paint black, that was another option and all of that. I mean, you basically pay for everything. But it's worth it because oh, yeah, honestly. It's not what? It's back there. Oh yeah. It's a friend. The friend. <laughs> Sounds like a golf cart on steroids. Not terrible. This seat in the front is quite comfortable. It's quite upright, which you can't adjust, um, which is a bit annoying. But the seat itself isn't that bad. However, the seat in the back is tiny. Um, I mean, I'm not very tall. I'm 1 meter 75, 76 or something, and it's cramped for me in the back. Anything above my height is really just uncomfortable. But apart from that, I mean, the suspension obviously is really not great, but uh, it's not that bad. It's not as bad as people think inside in terms of warmth, because you do have the doors, if you have the doors and the windows, of course. If you don't have those, then it's absolutely freezing. But with the doors and the windows, it's fine. I mean, you can get around. It's winter time here. I mean, sure, it's Monaco where it's not the coldest place in the world, but you really can. You can drive around early mornings when it's freezing without feeling anything, really. <laughs> Handling's actually really good. Go as we go around the hairpin corner. Whoa! The grip. The grip, the grip is impressive. Basically, the batteries are really low down, so the center of gravity is quite low, um, which is really good for the handling, obviously. Through the F1 tunnel! Is it going to tell us we're speeding? 
No, 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 we're not. Didn't manage. That's annoying. Our Aventador. <laughs> when you're doing 70, you feel like you're doing 90 to 100. So when you're driving around town, you feel like you're go-karting. And it's just really fun. It makes every little drive sort of an event. Um, which, I, I mean, I love that. I think it's, it, it's, it's a great feature, you know, to be able to take this car out any day, drive it around town and feel like you're racing. It's really cool. I think they did a really, really good job. They kind of made it cute without making it ridiculous. I mean, obviously some people find it ridiculous, but I think it's kind of cool in the black like this. People seem to love it. So, <laughs> I mean, my favorite thing are the scissor doors. I think that was so cool of them to, to put that on this car. Um, but people really like it. People take photos. People sort of ask you about it, ask you all sorts of questions. Uh, you know, what the range is and all of that. And uh, no, I mean, I think they did well on the styling. It's kind of like having a supercar, but not having a supercar in the way that people stop you, people take photos, people ask you questions. And they just want to know more about it, really, because, I mean, more people can afford this than supercars, A. B, it's just kind of cute and people don't feel intimidated by it. Let's see. Uh, no. If he was going to get away from us anyway, it would oh, be here. Yeah. That's a lot quicker, a lot cooler, a lot louder, and a lot more comfortable than this. I'm not jealous. At high speeds, the wind noise um, gets pretty bad, so it gets quite hard to. So when you've got the Bluetooth audio in, it gets quite hard to hear your music, or to talk to the person behind, or if you're talking to someone on the phone, all of that. It, it, I mean, don't call and drive, but if it's on the Bluetooth thing, you can. Um, sun. But, so that's that's a downside. I mean, obviously, no yeah, no sun visors as well is another is another downside. Uh, obviously, the suspension. I know I keep ranting on about it, but it really is pretty terrible. Is the biggest downside I would say for me. Um, the space. I mean, there's no boot. That's a downside. You can't really uh, you can't really go shopping and stuff. But you actually make do. There are these big portions here on the side, uh, down on each side of you. Which, uh, which are quite useful to put like bags of shopping or whatever, um, which is really, is really good. <laughs> Upsides, there are many. I mean, I think this is a very temperamental car, so it's kind of, it's only useful in certain places. So if you live in the countryside in England, no way. I mean, this is not the car for you. However, if you live in, on the Riviera or somewhere like this, next to a city where you can charge it often and you're not doing long drives, honestly, this is the perfect place to have it. Because you can sort of drive it so easily um, and drive it around town, park it anywhere, you don't have to pay for fuel. There are charging points everywhere in Monaco, for example, or Santa Fe, or even southern Spain and stuff. I know there are a lot of charging points. So that makes it really, really useful. And honestly, I mean, it's, you're not going to have this as your only car most of the time. The people who have this is kind of a sidecar that they use for, for um, driving around town. And for that purpose, you don't really care about things like suspension or air conditioning and all of that stuff. You kind of tend to forget that. Um, so I think it's really good at what it wants to do. So this review has turned into a spot of car spot hunting as we chase down a Ferrari F12. Oh, that chase didn't last very long. <laughs>